you know, if if you're teaching your kids, you know, how do you teach your kids? You know, what is it that uh, you do differently? If you do anything differently, and I, I honestly I do I do things slightly differently because you know they're my kids. Okay, uh, you're not entitled to anything from me. I'm not obligated to give any of you anything. Um, I'm not expected, you know, to to be your best friend or to be your your guiding light. As much as I seem like I am in the videos, um, it's because I'm talking to my kids, and that's why you have this you know, connection with me because you, you hear the sincerity in what it is I'm teaching because I care about them receiving it from me. So it's like a an archive of me teaching, instructing, encouraging my own children. So when I talking with a sense of sincerity and, and empathy uh, it, it's genuine because I have them in my mind now invariably sometimes I get a, a student that's outside my family tree and they'll contact me and they'll say hey look you know I really appreciate if you could do this this that and I would touch on those types of those topics of rather and or one of my kids will say dad how do you how do you deal with a situation like this? Or what if the market does that? Or how do you know when not to do something? Or when should you really push it aggressively? Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, not so much today, but I wanna give like a baseline on where you should be at when you first sit down and start learning how to do this. Um, I'll push buttons in front of you. I, I'll talk about where the market should go. I'll talk about what PD array isn't so important to me at the time and why and the ones that I think are important so that way it kind of like filters out and because I plan on doing this Monday through Friday um, it will be a exercise for you now if you are already profitable if you're already profitable whether you're using my concepts or a derivative of them or you're doing something entirely different it's probably better that you don't watch the live stream just do what you normally do because I'm probably going to distract you or I'll be a perfect excuse for you. If you take a losing trade, you'll say ICT caused me to, to lose money and you won't take responsibility and you need to be responsible. OK, um, the things I'm going to touch on is obviously, you know, where your mind should be every day sitting down in front of the charts. You have to have some reason to be in the charts doing it. So that's the reason why I started the, the stream at around eight o'clock and I was like seven minutes late. But, you know, you're not my employer. <laughs> Highly unlikely, but it's still an initial idea. So when you're first trying to learn how to read these markets, when you're first trying to determine where the market's likely to go, you have to strip away everything that you're trying to force into reading every single individual candlestick. And if you watch a lot of my videos or if you have a lot of notes or you've dabbled in things, chances are you probably already have a pet technique that you want to be yours. And you may not even be good at using it yet, but you just want it because it has a cool name, like a, a Reaper fair value guy. You know, when I taught that to my private mentorship, they're like, uh, oh man, I, that's going to be my thing. <laughs> that's going to, that's going to be it for me, you know, or event horizon, which is the midpoint between two, uh, two, uh, new week opening gaps or new day opening gaps. And because of the names, okay, these names are meaningful to me. They're not meant to inspire you to want to do them over another. It's just, that's that's what I name them. I got 81 of these things. So it's a way for me to keep track of what its purpose was and or it kind of puts a little stamp of when I discovered it and something had a impact on me and it was a cool name or inspiration to it. So when we're looking at price, as you as a brand new student not knowing what to do you want to make this kind of like a game and a, a discovery something fun not a video game okay but it's a game of determining does it have what it takes to move to these highs here a way of saying it to yourself that's very disarming it's okay I see how this is smooth these two highs are relatively equal that looks like a real nice, obvious, flat space in price. We don't see that same flatness down here. You see that? So in other words, if you had a shark, if you had two sharks rather, 
You have two sharks in front of you. One has had its teeth removed. Well, that would be represented something like this. This is the shark with no teeth. It's basically got gums, okay? There's no teeth there. Down here, there has been a shark attack. How do we know that? Because we can see the wounds from the teeth, the jaggedness, the jaggedness, the jaggedness. And now it's going to another, free, uh, to another frenzy or feeding. Where is that? Well, we, we've just created one. We have this high here that's really close to this one. You see that? So you observe price action and you're looking for areas that look real smooth and safe where they say peace and safety, sudden destruction comes upon them. Any time that you're looking at price action, and it doesn't matter what time frame you're looking at. Okay. If you're looking at it through the lens of a second chart, sub sub one minute or a weekly chart or a monthly chart or a quarterly chart where it's three months of data compressed in to make the candlesticks. It does not matter. This principle is always true. The market will go to an area of smoothness for the purpose of disrupting any orders that would be resting above or below it. We've already mentioned down here. Let me show you. Now, don't be discouraged if you can't watch this stuff real time and see it or outline it in, in advance. It's okay for you to come home for work and look at your, your, your charts after the fact and go back and look at this and study it as if you have obviously the benefit of, of hindsight initially, but you don't want to stay in that very long. So you're going to have to procure yourself some instruments that will allow you to watch price action, not with market replay. I, look, I, I am not a fan of market replay. I absolutely loathe it. I hate it. I can't stand it. And I wish it wasn't available. That's that I wish it wasn't even available to any one of us because it's a crutch that allows frauds to be able to sound like they're smart and teach something because it's already happened. If you can do it over live price action, not just once in a while, but continuously and your audience or, or viewership can see this, then you have earned the right to have a voice. And then people should have no problem sitting and listening to you lecture and, and talk about what you think is likely to occur because you have a sound basis or foundation to what, what it is that you're talking about. And therefore, because you have a track record of being able to talk about before it happens, it removes the anxiety that is reasonable for everyone to have when they first sit down and listen. But when you as the student and you don't have the ability to watch it live because you have a job or you're in university or you sleep, like you have to sleep, right? And your place in the world and your general geographic location may not be conducive for you to trade at 8.30 in the morning New York local time. You may have to trade in a London session. And yes, Virginia, I will be up during the London session doing one of these or two of these lectures in a week or two. Okay. So we're not, we're not focusing on one specific time of the day. And I'll come back to that section where I was telling you right down the times of the day in a moment. But when we're looking at initially, you don't have to see this real time to get a collection of screenshots for your journal. But if you don't do this and journal and screenshot and annotate your chart and study how long price runs took place? How many candles did it take to move there? Was there any kind of formation in the price delivery that would have caused you to not trust it unfolding? Now that's gonna be very hard for you to do because initially, especially the men, they're always gonna say, no, I would have never second guessed it. It would have, it would have been easy for me to hold on to that. And these same people, when they get into a trade, if they ever were to do it in front of you, they don't have any conviction and they're gonna hurry up and bail out on the trade. Okay, I gotta I got get out of this. I can't stand the pressure. It's moved five handles. But they call 30 handles or 50 handles above or below and they get out of five handles because the pressure of it not doing what they expected it to do and then realizing a loss in front of someone, that's a lot more pressure for them and they don't want to have that. So what's more important, their image 
for them following a model that they have seen works and have trusted and did the back testing and they have the data behind it, their image. And that's not someone you should learn from, okay? Uh, I'm just tossing that out there. So what we're looking for always, the first thing that you're looking for, Caleb, is where is the market smooth on the 15, the five, and the one minute chart? I knew it, ICD. Yeah, <laughs> that's how it is. So when you're looking for the bias, okay, the easiest, most scientifically proven, nine out of 10 doctors approve, ICT has nailed it down to a science of wherever the smooth equal highs are or smooth relative equal lows are at the beginning of seven o'clock to 7.30 or eight o'clock to 8.30 or nine to 9.30, you have three opportunities, three chances, okay? As each one of these time when those passes by, so at seven o'clock, we formed the relative equal highs. And then at eight to 8.30, we didn't go up there yet. So that means that what, nine to 9.30, chances are that's the run. See how that does that? It increases the likelihood of it going there. It doesn't diminish it because it's building up more trust in that area right there. So the framework begins at seven o'clock in the morning. Start looking for relative equal highs to form. Not before, key, key takeaway is not before seven o'clock. At seven o'clock, look for them to form. Big, 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 big takeaway there, okay? If you're looking for relative equal highs prior to seven o'clock in the morning, you may, you may get it, but many times you're expecting the London session to be completely overrid. And it, it's, it's most times not the case. So it kind of like builds in this filter where you're not trying to demand that the run on London is removed or, or dismissed because of price overlapping it and going back over top of it. Because the general consensus is um, we could see the higher low they form in London. So if it's bearish or bullish relative to a higher time frame draw, which is not necessary. Notice I haven't even used that here yet. Only thing I used was a 15 minute time frame, a five minute time frame, and a one minute time frame. And I was framing it on the basis of time because I understand my algorithm. I understand what it's gonna do. I understand exactly what these markets are gonna do. Every single day, every single day, it will not stop. It will not be hidden from you, but it can be disrupted by manual intervention. And that will always cause me to lose. It will always cause me to be incorrect because that's something that we and no one can predict. It's their casino. If they want to come in and you know disrupt everything, it is what it is. And that's the inherent risk that every one of us has to assume while trading. So that's that should be the number one reason why you should never over leverage. Because that is always looming. And we're in a condition in the marketplace right now in geopolitical tension and turmoil that is expected to unfold at any given time. Any moment, folks, things could pop off and your little indicator or your little market structure idea, whether it be mine or somebody else's stuff, means nothing when that happens. It literally is cannon fodder. It's gone. You're dusted. And if you happen to be over leveraged when it happens, you're going to eat it. And sorry, but it's not going to be pleasurable. It's going to be it's going to be a hard swallow and probably end you and take you out of the game entirely. And all of that is avoidable if you don't over leverage. If you trade with one contract and you try to capture moves like this, I promise you, you're going to beat the socks off of every one of the live streamers out there, and my students included. All of them that are doing well now, they're going to start applying this and watch and see how well they start increasing. And the people that don't like me, their trades are going to start working and go back and look at what I'm taught you here. They're going to, you're going to see that they're using this too. It's a secret weapon. I didn't want to give it to anybody. I did not want to give it away to anyone. It's a, it's a home field advantage, one of many that I have, but because I want my son to know what he's doing that's real simple. It's, it's not complicated. It's one or the other. And if there's two extremes, above and below the range, that's relative equal high and relative equal low, then you just wait for one of them to be disrupted. And just sometimes you'll miss a move. 
Sometimes it'll do it and then you won't get a trade. Who cares? Who cares? When you back test this, you're gonna, say, you're gonna see like, what am I worried about, man? Like this is so many times offered to me every single week, right? That's the mindset you need to come away with. Not I gotta trade every single day. When it's so obvious, when it's so obvious, that's the ones you wanna trade on. Because retail is going to have every hope and prayer hanging on those relative equal highs, thinking it's resistance. And they're going to eat them. They're going to devour them and grind their bones, the powder. And you can have a moral dilemma and have some convictions about that being, well, I can't do that to somebody else. I can. Because they sign the same risk disclosure that I do when I open up an account. And if they make the wrong move, don't interrupt them. That's how you eat. That's how you eat here. And if you have a problem with that, then trading's not for you. And there's nothing wrong with that either. But hopefully you, you see that when we're doing this, we're not trying to be smart. We're not trying to be more popular than somebody else. We're not trying to get more attention and more viewership or more followers. We're in here to try to make money so that way you can make your ends meet. That's it. And some of you will supercharge that and become pillars in the community and, and, and titans and be so much bigger than I am. And I'm here to see it. I want to see it. I want to cheer you on. I'd love it for one of my sons to be that person. I've been trying to cultivate that since they were little. But they're, they're individual personalities. And... You know how it is. You don't want to listen to your parents. And even if your dad can do it and prove it over and over and over and over and over again, sometimes still isn't enough as a motivation to do it because you have to want to do it. And guess what makes that happen? When you make them work menial jobs and they hate it. And what's the alternative? College? That's out of the question. So do what works. Do what works and can be proven I could do this in front of the Supreme Court, right? Just like I did today. I ain't afraid of it. I'm not afraid of this. And when you get that confidence, it's not arrogance, but when somebody doesn't know how to do something and they fail miserably, when they hear somebody talk like that and when they see somebody display it, it's so uncomfortable. It's unbearable for them. So now you are a narcissistic jerk. You're arrogant. You're conceited. Okay. Is that going to make me lose money on the next trade? No. Is that going to make me forget that the logic that is being, being employed here? No. I'm not here for friends. I'm not here for friends. Neither should you be. I'm warming up to these candlesticks when it's appropriate. But when the date is over, I'm going home alone. They're not spending the night with me. That's all it is. It's a momentary engagement and I'm leaving before any kids are made. Simple as that. I'm staying protected. I'm wrapping up. I got a stop loss. I know when I hit the brakes and go out the other direction. If it's a grenade, I'm getting out of there before it does any damage. And that's me thinking like a man. For the ladies, you, you come up with your own analogy. I'm not that good with it when, with the lady side. 